<coughs> Hello, so uh, my name is Scott Shaw, I'm Curriculum Director of Science at UTC OLP and I'll be talking about the uh, GCSE subjects to begin with for sciences at year 11. So at year 11, um, we've been, had a lot of questions initially about modifications to the exams. And so far, the examination content will be the same as previous years prior to COVID. So the exam board said there's going to be no change to the content which can be assessed. The only slight change to it is that students don't necessarily need to carry out the practical activities. We're going to endeavour within this year to make sure the students have done those or at least observed them so they can be able to answer the exam questions at the end of the year. So students will sit two exams for each science. So they'll sit two for biology, two exams for chemistry and two exams for physics and they'll be awarded three separate GCSEs. Each exam is one hour 45 minutes in length. And each exam's out of a total of 90 marks, with the first 15 marks of that 90 being a multiple choice. Students should spend at least 25 to 30 minutes on these multiple choice questions to begin with. Just because they're multiple choice doesn't mean they're necessarily easier than the written questions. So, as I said, it's going to be split into two papers. Paper one will be on content taught in year 10, and the second paper is paper two, which will be year 11 content, which we've taught them this year. So at the end, these two, after they've sat both papers, the marks for each paper will be added together, and then a grade will be awarded from the top grade nine down to grade one. And then students, as I said, will be awarded a GCSE for each science individually. Here are some key dates to uh, put into the calendar. The mock assessments for physics will be happening on Monday the 22nd of November. They'll be sitting paper one content, so that's stuff that we've been taught in year 10, so last year. Biology will be Friday the 26th of November and similarly that will be paper one content. Chemistry, if the student is in the Y side, a Y cohort of the year, theirs is on Thursday the 25th of November and the X side of the year group we're sitting it on Tuesday the 23rd of November. We do run regular sessions for students to be able to come along to after school. So there'll be revision sessions for biology, chemistry and physics every Tuesday after school from 3.30 to 4.30. Some of you may have um, been requested already to attend these, but just to stress, they are open for all. There's 20 minutes of biology, then 20 minutes of chemistry and 20 minutes of physics, um, revising content which we've done in the past to aid students in increasing their attainment over this year. The exams, well, we can see here, um, the exams for physics will be on Wednesday the 9th of June, um, and then on Friday the 29th of June. The papers are split into a foundation tier and higher tier. On the foundation tier, students can secure a grade from one to five, so five is the highest grade, and on the higher tier, the, it goes from grade three to grade nine. So at this moment in time, students are being tested on different tiers to see which is the most suitable for them, and a decision will be made after these mocks have been done in November. Chemistry, we have again, the first exam, paper one, which will be year 10 content, will be on Tuesday the 15th of June, and the paper two will be on the 29th of June. And for physics, the first paper, paper one, will be on the 22nd of June, and the second paper will be on the 2nd of July. We've got some techniques which would really aid students in their revision. First of all is regular testing and active revision. The more active question based um, answering questions that a student can do, the better they will uh, do in their exams. 
Uh, it's passive revision, simply reading, you know, making um, big displays and stuff um, is shown to have lower impact. So we want the highest impact revision being done. Um, that means that revision can be less in time as well. So we're not asking students to do lots and lots of um, time revision, but making sure when they do the revision, it's impactful. It's important we're working smart. So making flashcards and testing yourself regularly on concepts is important. And look of a right check for um, certain uh, rote learning things that, which students need to learn, such as the physics equations, which uh, the example would say that they will still need to learn. This is a very good way of, um, of learning them, just as, as students may have done at primary school learning their spellings. So we've got sets of revision guides which I'd advise students to get. And um, these are the CPG OCR gateway revision guides. So OCR do two exams. We're on the gateway path. So please make sure you get that. There's also exam practice workbooks with um, exam questions in, which are very useful for students to work through. And then also flashcards, which students may be able to purchase. Um, if I was saying the best way to maximise revision on this, I'd actually do it in the reverse order. I'd say the question cards are probably the best because it's always going to be active revision. You're always quizzing yourself once you use them. The workbook next, sit down, just work through the exam questions and be able to mark them yourself. The last one would be the revision guide because students have a tendency just to read it, which actually has low impact or just copy out the notes from the revision guide. It's better to be questioning oneself against the content rather than uh, regurgitating and just copying, basically. So I'll move on now to the year 13 biology. Um, Mr. Sleaf, who's heading this course, said, has also looked and said that there'll be no change to the content similarly to the GCSE. So anything from prior to COVID could be tested on that. So they'll sit three exams um, for their A level. And it's split, as you can see, into three papers. Biological processes, which is out of 100 marks, the same as biological diversity. And both of those papers are two hours and 15 minutes each. They are tested on material from year 12 content, from when they studied in year, year 12, and year 13 in both papers. As you can see, um, paper one, biological processes, tests modules one and two, and the same with the biological diversity. It's just the year 13 content, which it mixes up in the papers. And then unified biology is anything that can be taught. And that's only a 70 mark exam, which is one hour 30 in length. As you can see there, the weighting for each paper. Is basically to simplify it, they just add up the total amount of marks and then award a grade from A star to E. Here are the key dates. Uh, so the mocks will be starting um, in Mr. Sleeve's lesson on Friday, the 19th of November. And he'll be running intervention sessions on chapter 17 and 18 with an in class test and review, and module five on Monday, the 15th. Miss uh, Sleeve, sorry, it's also said that regular testing, that revision is important. Flashcards and cover right check. The revision techniques for A level students shouldn't be dissimilar to those of GCSE students. We still learn in the same way. Um, it's advised that the to get the OCR complete revision and practice books. Um, the more practice questions that students can do, the more past papers students can do, the better. It's about being familiar with the exams and practicing and finding those gaps in knowledge to be able to fill them in.